This was taken with the Fujifilm X-Pro1. I think I had the 18mm f2 on at the time, but this was a print I just made of a picture I took back in January or so when I was on one of my photo walks, kind of trying to experiment with the camera and the lens and stuff like that. And a lot of you guys have asked whether I still use the X-Pro1 and I still take the X-Pro1 out. And the short answer is yes, I still do. I actually kind of use it a lot. It's just in a different way. And I actually don't talk about it much on YouTube. I, funny thing is I do a lot of stuff that I don't talk about on YouTube, so. And I still do like the camera a lot, so I still do use it a lot, but I kind of use it exclusively for black and white now. And this was one of the images that kind of really started me on this kind of cycle of using the X-Pro1 for just monochrome and black and white. I don't know if you guys can see this image too well, but the paper I printed it on was Hanamiyo's Barida paper. So it's a really high whiteness kind of paper, but it also has, um, a really good gloss to it. So it has this really nice texture to it, but also like the, the glow and the shine is really good. And I think it fitted out well for this image quite a lot, actually. I was intending to kind of crush the shadows a lot for this image, but I also wanted to keep kind of the detail in it. So when I was using this kind of paper, it actually was able to bring out a lot of that detail. So I'm quite happy with that print. That's pretty much what this video is going to be about. I'm gonna talk a bit about how I'm using the X-Pro1 now. Um, and I'm gonna be sharing some of my settings with you guys because I know a lot of you guys have asked, um, especially on some of my older videos as to which settings that I'm using when I'm taking certain pictures and whatnot. Let's go ahead and get started. So as I said, when I was taking pictures with the X-Pro1 earlier this year, uh, I was shooting a lot of black and white images and I think that kind of attracted me to just shoot black and white on the X-Pro1 and that's not necessarily because I don't like the color on the X-Pro1 it's just that when I'm shooting color I prefer shooting on the X-Trans4 sensor so you guys know how the X-Pro1 has kind of a unique sensor to it um, and it renders colors and stuff differently than the other Fujifilm cameras. Uh, for better or worse, it's kind of a preference thing. But out of all of the Fujifilm film simulations and things like that, I like Classic Chrome the best. And the X-Pro1 doesn't have Classic Chrome. So naturally, I kind of gravitated away from the other film simulations. If I had to pick one, I would shoot an Astia or I would just edit the images straight out of the Adobe RAW colors because I think the uh, the RAW colors for the X-Pro1 are actually really, really good. Since I prefer Classic Chrome, I started just shooting color on my other cameras and then I kind of left the X-Pro1 to uh, be my exclusive kind of black and white camera. Specifically because I really like how monochrome renders on this camera, I think it has a really unique look to it. But I also kind of like composing in just black and white as well. I think it allows me to uh, pay attention more to lighting and exposure and then I can get some really solid images out of it So that's how I'm using the X-Pro1. It's pretty much my mainly exclusive black and white camera now All right moving on in camera settings for the X-Pro1 or at least my black and white settings A lot of you guys have asked me especially on the kind of older video that I took with the X-Pro1 um, When I went down to the bluffs a lot of you guys like the black and white images that came out of it and were curious as to what settings I use It's actually not that complicated I don't do a lot of settings or anything like that changes inside the camera. I kind of want it to come out as natural as possible, at least when I'm shooting JPEG, but I actually don't shoot JPEG that much anymore. So I'm going to talk about what I would do with the camera back then, and I'm going to kind of talk about what I do with the RAW files now because I shoot mainly RAW now. So as far as JPEG images go, um, there's actually very little I do to the in-camera settings. I shoot monochrome, and I shoot monochrome with a yellow filter. So yellow filter, um, if you guys don't know, it's kind of a way to control um, colors and stuff like that when you're shooting black and white. Um, a lot of people would use it back in the older film days. What yellow essentially does is it kind of blocks out blue. So it makes for higher contrasting skies and stuff like that. And I think it's a really good all purpose kind of filter if you need one kind of filter to um, use with your black and white settings. And this isn't like, you can buy an external yellow filter and put it on the front of your camera, but in Fujifilm cameras like the X-Pro1, you can actually just dial it into the settings so I can choose monochrome with a yellow filter or monochrome with a red filter or monochrome with a green filter. And I think that is really cool because then you don't have to have the actual external filter on. So that's what I do. I just use monochrome with the yellow filter. I think it brings out the skies more. I think it brings out certain tones that I kind of like 
uh, better and it's a really good all-purpose kind of filter to use if you're just walking around and you're not entirely sure what the weather is going to be like, what the tones are going to be like, and you don't want to worry about it too much. And then as for the other settings, all I do is I just add plus two to highlights and plus two to shadows. I think what this does is increases the contrast of my image and it also kind of really helps me uh, focus. So when I'm composing and I'm focusing on exposure when black and whites, I think it makes for, um, it kind of brings out the highlights and it brings out the shadows so I can tell where light is better, at least for feedback in the camera, you know what I mean? But it also, in the resulting image, I think it looks better. I think it has a higher kind of contrast profile and I generally like higher contrast profiles, especially with black and white. So that's pretty much all I do with my X-Pro1 settings, super simple. But now since I switched over to kind of a raw format, I don't really I don't really get those straight out of camera JPEGs anymore simply because when you're converting raws in Lightroom or Capture One, it kind of loses that initial exposure or initial composition that you had when you had it. But it's not too big of a deal for me because I just edit it in Capture One or Lightroom now, which, spoiler alert, I'm kind of switching over to Capture One now. I'm trying to get off that whole kind of Adobe stuff, but I kind of figured out how to get a similar look in the editing program, so I don't worry too much about shooting just JPEGs, especially because I shoot raw now because I want that kind of higher dynamic range for print. It allows me more flexibility in post, and it's just, I think it's just better. So maybe I'll do a later video on how I edit my images when I kind of figured out the whole Capture One thing. Uh, Capture One is kind of interesting because it actually doesn't support X-Pro One, so you can't use film simulations with images taken from the X-Pro One. So before in Lightroom, I used to just uh, import the RAWs and then I could choose between which filters I wanted, which I actually used the monochrome red filter a lot when I wanted to bring out skin tones. Uh, but I can't really do that in Capture One, so you kind of have to edit that. But yeah, so my current workflow now is I compose the pictures on the X-Pro One with those settings, and then I kind of bring them into Capture One, and then I edit them to look kind of the same way anyways. I am pretty happy with the resulting image. I don't think you need to do too much with the black and whites to make it look good. I just like a higher contrast scene when it comes to black and whites. So I would pump up my highlights, pump up my shadows. I think pulling out the highlights and kind of crushing the shadows gives a look a little more reminiscent to like newspapers and just older kind of film images and stuff like that. So that's the way I like to do it. I also like to add a lot of grain in post, not too much obviously, but just enough to like make it look nice. So. That's pretty much it for this video. Maybe I'll make another video on how I edit my X-Pro1 images uh, in the future. Let me know what kind of videos you guys want to see from this channel. And yeah, let me know how you guys feel about black and white on the X-Pro1 and if you like the color or not, or if you prefer black and white, just how you guys like to use the X-Pro1. Um, if you like this video, please go ahead and like the video down below. Subscribe to this channel for more and I will see you guys in another video. Thanks for watching guys. Peace.